Hi, my name is Masaki Sugisaki, and this is the Great British Chef Signature Series. I love Italian cooking. The structure of the cooking makes me feel like familiar. Yeah, I really like the Italian cuisine. My parents, as an oldest son of family, forced me to enter to kitchen, so I used to hate it. However, after years and years, I realized that it's actually fascinating. So that's how I entered the kitchen. How I learned in the kitchen is that, okay, respect the ingredient and try to understand the character of it. I'm going to be cooking the squid bolognese. I got this idea of this dish uh, from this beautiful Cornish day boat called uh, squid. We use the, uh, the supplier called Pesky Fish. They are the one that connect me directly to the fishermen. When they catch something, they let us know through WhatsApp, blah, blah, blah. It's a total game changer. And when I get the squid, I thought, okay, I need to make something fun. So this squid bolognese came up to my mind. Hopefully you like it. First thing for us to work on is to take the dashi stock. In this case, I'm taking slightly unusual dashi stock called koi dashi. The koi means almost like highly concentrated dashi stock. So first thing first, we're gonna start cleaning this beautiful kelp. Use the damped clean cloth and then tap it clean. These white parts you can see, this is mainly glutamic acid. Japanese dashi stocks, which is the base of majority of the Japanese cooking, is all about this combination of glutamic acid and inositic acid. In this case, these two genius combination is going to create more than 10 times stronger umami flavor. We're going to uh, submerge this kelp and this shiitake mushroom together in a filtered water and leave it overnight in the fridge. I've already prepared one earlier. You are actually putting the, uh, the, all the liquid and the elements together in the vacuum sealed pack and then they keep the temperature between 60 to 65 degrees for one hour. Best way is to use this uh, sous vide machine. I set the temperature to 65 degrees. If you cook it over, uh, with the higher temperature, then they will start to release unnecessary elements such as acidic or like a slimy texture and the bitterness as well. So now what you need to do is pour this liquid into a pan and then you start to heat up. So now the, uh, the temperature reached to 85 degrees, which is the perfect, perfect temperature for the bonito flake. So bonito flakes, this is a staple of Japanese cooking. It's a dried bonito, shaved into this paper thin uh, kind of consistency. If you eat it as it is, it's actually packed full of flavor. When you use this one, you can get the nice gentle smokiness. This bonito flake is the, one of the most commonly used ingredient in Japan. So now it's been two minutes and uh, simply you just need to pass through. When you pass through, please be gentle. Now, here's a beautiful golden color of dash stocks. Next stage is to season the beautiful dash stock we just take. One liter of dash stock to be in the pot and then bring it up to boil. Once it starts to boil, all you need to do is add three different elements, which is a sea salt. I'm using the molten salt this time. And I'm also using this time a light soy sauce. Finally, I'm using the sake. Sake's alcohol and the other umami rich flavor will combine everything together. Simply add the salt and light soy sauce and gently stir to dissolve the salt. And finally, when the, uh, the salt is dissolved completely, you just need to add sake and job done. Stop the heat. So next stage is to actually start to prepare the squid. What I'm going to do is that, cut it half. How you cut, basically first piece you can sacrifice. And from the second piece, you just need to make it straight, just like that. So I'm gonna show you the piece, just show you the example. So this is the thickness and this is the width. Just enough thickness to enjoy the both cooked, surface cooked, and then the inside raw, that kind of two different uh, flavor and the texture. Next, what we're gonna do is just dress it with the extra virgin olive oil. 
So normally olive oil is not the common ingredient to use it with in a traditional Japanese cuisine. Sometimes when you go to a Japanese restaurant, you are overwhelmed because of the unknown objects or like atmosphere. But I don't want that in my restaurant. That's why I'm using quite a bit of uh, European ingredient like this. So very lightly seasoned with the sea salt, just a pinch. And give a little stir. After this process, you leave this on the side for 5-10 minutes. So when you eat it, actually you can taste the olive oil. So now we are making the minced squid uh, by utilizing these pieces. You place them in a nice flat surface. Then either you can chop them like this way, or in my case, I'm going to do this so that I can control the size of it. So now, this squid piece is just like a noodle shape like this. Then you place it in a different angle, so 90 degrees from my side. And then you cut it into a small dice. So as you can see, it's not minced properly. It's, it's almost like a dice cut. If you could create this consistency, the final product is going to change a huge difference. So please do try. So now it's the time to play with tentacles. Separate the each one. Then you just need to cut it into small pieces like this. Then use this part of the knife to kind of chop it. But make sure you don't, you're not gonna make the other uh, pasty texture. So this is the final consistency I always looking for. Okay, so now we are making actual bolognese. Um, we prepare the, uh, the minced squid and I'm gonna use the white miso sake. And as it is a bolognese, obviously we need a tomato kind of flavor so that uh, I'm using the concentrated uh, tomato paste. Heat up the, uh, the saucepan, put the olive oil. So now I'm adding the squid into the pan. As you can see, pan is not extremely hot. It's just enough to uh, start to cooking gently. So after you are cooking the squid, look at this amount of water. This is actual squid water coming out. And this is packed full of umami flavor. So you don't want to lose this. Once it's cooked off completely, this is a timing for you to put the tomato puree in there. And now all you need to do is uh, cook off the tomato puree. So now tomato is evenly spread. This is the time add up the sake into it. And you put it back on high heat. Let them reduce a little bit. After a couple of minutes, you can smell that all the alcohol is gone now, burnt off. So this is the timing to add up the, uh, the white miso paste. You just simply need to add into it and just loosen them. You just need a good stir until the miso dissolved so that each part of the squid has enough flavor to it. Okay, so now the, uh, the consistency of the sauce became perfect. So you add up a tiny bit of squiddy soy in there. You just need to give a good stir and sauce is ready. Now we're gonna finish off the, uh, the dish. So first thing first, Let's start blanching the, uh, the squid. So now blanching liquid is start to kind of reach to a boiling point, so I reduce the heat. All you need to do is to give the, uh, the one final stir. When you are ready, you just put it into the liquid. And you stir with chopsticks. As you can see, it instantly it's curled up. That means it's start to be cooked. And this is enough time for you to take out. Drain the water take it in the bowl and you start to plating. Put the pasta in the middle of the plates. 40 to 50 grams is going to be the perfect quantity for this sauce. Just let them sit on top. Then extra virgin olive oil. Good amount. Then the Julienne sisal leaf on top. Pink peppercorn. This is really refreshing, almost fruity kind of peppery flavor. It's just going to give you a nice kick. And this 
is the Sancho pepper. This one basically has really kicky spiciness into it and then it make your tongue almost numb. So finish with this uh, toasted botaga. Quantities is your preference, but I prefer quite a good amount of botaga. So there you go. Here's my squid pasta miso bolognese. Enjoy.